Hey, future respiratory therapists, I've got a question here about base excess and base deficit and how we use it to help us understand our uh, arterial blood gas results. And so uh, the first thing you need to understand about base excess uh, or base deficit is that it doesn't really matter how it's expressed because what you may find is that that your base excess um, can be described as a positive number or a negative number, okay? And so basically if you have a base excess of plus 8, then that tells you in regards to hydrogen ions, you have an excess of base, which we know is our bicarb. Okay, now the opposite of that would be if you had a base excess of minus 8, then that means you have a deficit or you have a lack of bicarb. Okay, so it can be re base excess can be referred to as a negative number or it can be referred to as base deficit. Okay, so base excess would be positive, base deficit would be negative. Okay, and a negative base excess is also an illustration of a lack of base or a lack of bicarb in regards to your pH and to your overall blood gas. Okay, so that's the first thing you understand is don't let the wording confuse you. There's no difference between a base excess, I mean a base def, a base excess of minus eight and a base deficit of eight. Those are the same. Okay, that's where I want to start this at. Now the second thing we need to talk about is what is normal. Okay, so normal base excess, normal equals plus 2 to minus 2. Okay, now this, in my mind, kind of makes sense because you know absolute normal bicarb is 24, normal range is 22 to 26, so plus 2 or minus 2 from 24 gets us to the 26 to 22 range. Okay, so... The normals kind of make sense for me on this, okay? Now what base excess tells you is, is if you normalize CO2 to 40, what is your excess base or what is your deficit of base that you would need to normalize your pH, okay? That's basically what it tells you. Now, when you look at this, this tends to be a problem area for a lot of respiratory therapy students because one, I don't think it's taught real level, real well at the surface level because I think we might primarily just talk about bicarb. Okay, so we just give you the bicarb number. And if you look at the bicarb number in relationship to everything else, then you should be able to reasonably gra grasp if you have enough base or you have too much base or, or, or what your base excess or deficit would be. Okay, um, so I think that's one of the reasons why it's not... Um, focused on because we put more of a focus on bicarb. I'll also tell you that it's used highly in the nursing side of things to evaluate fluid resuscitation and and that's something that we typically have uh, hands off on. Okay, so we're not real typically involved in um, the inner workings of fluid resuscitation. So we probably don't get the, the inner workings and the details of, of base excess um, in terms of what a nursing student probably gets it and definitely what a medical student uh, or, or a future doctor gets it, okay? Um, but if you remember that, it's the amount of base that would be needed or the amount of base that would need to be removed if your CO2 was 40. So what we're going to do is look at some examples here, okay? And I'm going to start with uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. So we're going to go 7, 5, 6, our CO2 is 40, so we're going to go pH here, CO2 here, and bicarb here. I'm not even going to put O2 on the screen, okay? Now, and then I'm going to put base excess here, okay? Now, just looking at this blood gas, there's something that should jump out at you. You have an alkalotic pH, and you have a normal CO2. Right now, you already know that your bicarb is going to be elevated. It is the component that is raising the pH of this patient, okay? So let's say it's 34, okay? In this case, you would have a base excess of plus 11. 
okay? So normal CO2, base excess is telling you we have plus 11 excess of bicarb, which is an indication of our metabolic status. Okay, now the, the way I really think you get to learn and understand base excess is next time you get a blood gas, ask them for your pH and for your base excess. So pH is 7.56, CO2 is 40. If we eliminate the bicarb, then you should know right now I have to have a base excess. I have to have an excess of base because that's what's taking this to the alkalotic range. It makes sense, right? Okay, this is uncompensated metabolic alkalosis, okay? Now, let's flip the script here, okay? So now we're going to talk about uncompensated metabolic acidosis, okay? So now we got 7.24, we got 36 on our CO2, okay? And we have a base excess of minus 13, now, this should make sense, right? You have a normal CO2, but you have an acidotic pH. So your base deficit has to be negative. You have to have a negative base excess because your bicarb is going to be low, okay? So if we fill in that number, we could say 14. Then this makes sense, right? If I give you this as, as first or second year respiratory therapy, say second or third semester respiratory therapy students, depending on when you get blood gases, you should be able to go, oh yeah, absolutely. This is an uncompensated metabolic acidosis. Now, take the bicarb out of it, okay? And just put a base excess in there of minus 13. It does not change the interpretation of this blood gas. This is still, just with these three values, an uncompensated metabolic acidosis. Okay, so this is the shortage of base when the CO2 is calculated back to 40. Okay, now let's put some respiratory components on the board here so you can see how they look with um, some of our respiratory disorders. And I'm going to put the bicarb and the basic back up here so you can see this. Okay, so let's do... Um, Let's do chronic ventilatory failure, an acute respiratory acidosis, okay? No, no, I'm sorry. A fully compensated respiratory acidosis. So 7.39, okay? We'll go with our CO2 of 56, bicarb of 34, and our base excess is plus 7, okay? Now... The pH is normal on the acidotic side. The CO2 is elevated. That's what's causing it to be on the acidotic side. And your bicarb, because this is normal, has to be elevated. Because if it wasn't elevated, then this would be acidotic. Okay? So because the bicarb is elevated, that tells you that you're going to have a base excess. Now remember, I told you base excess is the excess amount of base if you corrected your pH back to a CO2, if you corrected your blood gas back to a CO2 of 40, how much base would have to be added or removed to achieve a normal pH? So this makes sense, right? If we take this back to 40, then this is going to go way high and we're now going to have a metabolic alkalosis. Okay, base excess tells you that excess of base that is present. It doesn't mean it needs to be removed right now because you don't want to remove it. If you remove it, your pH will go acidotic in response to the CO2. Okay, so you're not, you know, this doesn't tell you you need to remove this base. It's just letting you know base is elevated. Why is it elevated? The same reason bicarb is elevated to compensate for the respiratory acidosis caused by chronic ventilatory failure. Bicarb comes up to pull that back in the normal range and thus your base excess will be elevated as well. Okay, we're gonna look at one more and then I'm gonna let you go marinate on it, send me questions, ask me, ask me questions, send me comments, uh, whatever you want.
and I'll be glad to respond back to them. This actually came, this topic actually came from a student asking about a video over base excess uh, and such. So what I want to do now is a, um, a respiratory alkalosis. Okay. Um, or let's do, let's do uh, chronic alveolar hyperventilation. Okay. So this is 7.44. CO2 is 26. This is probably a head injury or something who chronically hyperventilates. Bicarb is 18. Your base excess is minus 4, which means you have a base deficit of 4. Okay. So if you look at this, your pH is 7.44. Your CO2 is 26. That's low. You know your bicarb has got to be compensating because if it wasn't, then your pH would be alkalotic because of the CO2 level, right? But your bicarb has gone down to compensate to bring this back into normal range. Thus, you have a base deficit of minus 4, which means this is how much bicarb you would be lacking, okay, if you recalculated the CO2 at 40. You would obviously, if the CO2 went back to 40, okay, then that goes up, your, CO, your pH would go down, and you would now have a metabolic acidosis, and that tells you the amount of which you would be shy when it comes to bicarb or base. Okay? So really guys, base excess, base deficit, when it's a pure metabolic problem, it's going to be an accurate reflection of your bicarb. Okay? It's going to be an, an interpretation of your metabolic disturbance. Okay? If you have a base deficit, then you've either lost bicarb or you have an excess of non-volatile acids. Okay, lactic acidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis, acute renal failure, any of those will cause an increase in non-volatile acids and will cause your bicarb to appear low and give you a base deficit or a negative base excess. Okay, uh, anything that causes your, your bicarb to go up from a metabolic standpoint will give you a positive base excess. Okay, that's through your metabolic disorders. Um, and so I hope this helps. I hope it makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, send me a question. Um, give me your thoughts, your comments, concerns. Hey, please subscribe to the channel. Give me a like. I'd love to hear from you. And can't wait to uh, talk to you again on the next video.